Ever wondered what secrets Napoleon Bonaparte's sister Elisa held behind her royal titles? Well, today we're going to peel back the layers of history and delve into the intriguing life of this lesser-known Bonaparte. Born Maria Anna Elisa Bonaparte, Elisa was the eldest sister of Napoleon Bonaparte, the man who would rise to become one of history's most famous conquerors. But Elisa was no mere sideline character in her brother's story. She held her own titles, standing tall as the Princess of Lucca and the Grand Duchess of Tuscany. A woman of intelligence and ambition, Elisa was known for her keen mind and her strong will. She was a force to be reckoned with, a woman who held her own in the male-dominated world of the 18th century. But beneath her impressive titles and her formidable intellect, Elisa Bonaparte was a woman shrouded in mystery, a woman who held dark secrets close to her chest. Some say she was ruthless, others claim she was greedy, and there are even whispers of forbidden romances. But what is the truth about Elisa Bonaparte? What secrets did she take to her grave, and how do these secrets shed light on the life she led and the legacy she left behind? These are the questions we'll be exploring as we delve into the life of Elisa Bonaparte. We'll look at the rumors and the facts, the whispers and the shouts, and we'll try to paint a picture of a woman who was much more than just Napoleon's sister. A woman who was a ruler in her own right, a woman of power and ambition, and a woman who, despite her royal status, was all too human. So are you ready to journey back in time, to the days of Napoleon and his intriguing sister, Elisa? Are you ready to uncover the secrets that have been buried for centuries? If so, then buckle up, because we're about to dive into the hidden aspects of Elisa's life. Elisa's personal life was as scandalous as it was secretive. Nestled within the grandeur and glory of her royal status, Elisa Bonaparte concealed a labyrinth of forbidden romances. Despite her marital status, Elisa's heart was a ship that sailed the seas of many romantic rendezvous. Her love life was a tapestry woven with threads of alleged affairs, each more scandalous than the last. Elisa was married to Felice Baciocchi, a handsome Corsican nobleman. However, the bonds of marriage were but gossamer threads in the face of her romantic whims. An array of lovers entered and exited Elisa's life in a whirlwind of passion and intrigue. The list of her alleged paramours was as diverse as it was extensive, encompassing both commoners and nobility. Among the most scandalous of these rumored relationships was one with her own stepson. Yes, you heard that right. Whispers of an affair with her stepson, Napoleon Elisa Bacciocchi, circulated in the hushed corners of the court. The rumors were never confirmed, but they added to the enigma that was Elisa Bonaparte. This relationship, if true, was not just a violation of societal norms but also a testament to Elisa's audacity. She was a woman who defied the traditional confines of her time, not just in her political ambition but also in her personal life. She was a woman unafraid of scandal, unbound by convention, and unrivaled in her pursuit of passion. But let's not forget that these are rumors, whispers in the hallways of history. The truth of Elisa's romantic liaisons remain shrouded in mystery just as she herself was. We can only speculate, imagine, and wonder about the true nature of her relationships. Elisa's love life was indeed controversial, but her ruthlessness in rule was equally alarming. As we delve further into her life, we'll see that Elisa's romantic exploits were just one facet of her complex persona. Her reign as a ruler was marked by a level of ruthlessness that matched the scandal of her personal life. But that's a tale for the next scene. For now, let's linger a bit longer in the intoxicating world of Elisa Bonaparte's forbidden romances. Elisa's rule was marked by a harshness that left many trembling. As the Princess of Lucca and Grand Duchess of Tuscany, Elisa Bonaparte was known for her iron fist. Her reign was not one of grace or compassion but rather one of brutality and fear. The lands under her dominion were subjected to a ruthless rule, a rule where dissent was not tolerated and opposition was met with swift and severe punishment. Elisa was not one to shy away from using force to maintain her power. The penalties for those who dared to go against her were harsh. She was known to impose strict sanctions on her opponents, crushing any resistance with an unyielding hand. Her rule was marked by a stark disregard for human life, as her actions led to the death of many. Her regime was not just characterized by its brutality, it was also marked by a distinct lack of mercy. Those who fell afoul of her laws were not given a chance to plead their case. They were sentenced without trial. Their fate sealed by the whims of a ruler who cared little for justice. 
The people under Elisa's rule lived in constant fear, their lives overshadowed by the dread of her wrath. They were subjects of a ruler who saw them not as people, but as pawns in her game of power. The suffering she inflicted on her subjects was a testament to her ruthless nature, a chilling reminder of the extent to which she was willing to go to maintain her power. Yet, despite the fear and brutality that marked her reign, Elisa remained unmoved. She did not flinch at the pain she caused, did not waver in the face of the suffering she inflicted. To her, the people were nothing more than a means to an end, a tool to be used in her quest for power. Her cruelty was shocking, yet her greed was no less appalling. Elisa's insatiable greed extended well beyond her political ambitions. This statement rings true when we delve into her financial exploits. Elisa was known to impose high taxes on her subjects. She was, after all, a princess and a grand duchess, and she intended to live like one. These taxes, however, were not just meant to maintain a certain lifestyle. They were a means to an end, the end being her ever-growing personal wealth. Elisa was not content with the income her titles brought her. She wanted more. And she found ways to get more. She was known to have a firm grip on the economy of her realms, closely monitoring trade and industry. She was not above using her power and influence to tilt the scales in her favor. And it worked. Her wealth grew exponentially during her reign, but wealth, like power, is addictive. And Elisa was no stranger to addiction. She had a passion for gambling, a passion that often saw her lose substantial amounts of money. Elisa was a regular at the gambling tables, her reputation as a high roller well known. She was not deterred by losses, always convinced that the next game would be the one to turn her luck around. This addiction, coupled with her insatiable greed, only served to heighten the controversies that surrounded her life. Her gambling addiction and financial greed were, in many ways, symptomatic of her larger flaws. They were manifestations of her need for control, for power, for more. Elisa's life was a constant pursuit of more, more power, more wealth, more everything. And in this pursuit, she often lost sight of the consequences of her actions. Elisa's life was indeed marked by controversy and scandal, but her death was no less mysterious. The story of Elisa Bonaparte is a tale of power, greed, and scandal, but it is also a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the cost of insatiable greed. Elisa's life came to an abrupt end during a cholera epidemic in 1820. This final chapter of her life is as shrouded in mystery and controversy as the rest of her existence. Elisa Bonaparte, the Princess of Lucca and Piombino, the Grand Duchess of Tuscany, Napoleon Bonaparte's ambitious elder sister, passed away amidst a raging cholera outbreak. Cholera, a deadly disease that thrived in the unsanitary conditions of the early 19th century, was a common cause of death. Yet there were whispers that Elisa's demise was not as straightforward as it seemed. The official narrative of Elisa succumbing to the cholera epidemic was questioned by some. Why? Because Elisa was a woman of secrets, a woman who had lived life on her terms, defying norms, stirring scandals, and not shying away from ruthlessness. Rumors began to circulate that Elisa's death was not due to cholera, but rather a suicide. The speculation was fueled by her lifestyle and the many controversies that surrounded her. The whispers of her illicit relationships, her ruthless rule, and her insatiable greed and love for gambling painted a picture of a woman in constant turmoil. Was it possible that the weight of her actions, the guilt, or perhaps the fear of retribution pushed her to take her life? Of course, these are just conjectures, whispers in the historical wind. There is no concrete evidence to support these claims. Yet, they add another layer of mystery and intrigue to the life of Elisa Bonaparte. They make us question, make us wonder. And perhaps that's what Elisa would have wanted. After all, she was a woman who thrived in the limelight, courted controversy, and lived a life that was anything but ordinary. Elisa Bonaparte was a woman of many secrets. Her life was a complex web of scandal, ruthlessness, and mystery, leaving us with more questions than answers. The tale of her life serves as a fascinating glimpse into a time of tumult, ambition, and audacity, reminding us that history is often more intriguing than fiction.